AI has completely changed the game of web scraping. In this video, I'll show you the different techniques that you can use these days to scrape a website like this. Meaning we want to get, for example, the product data from an e-commerce page like this, the title, description, price data. And there are several techniques that you need to be aware of that you can choose from. Traditionally, what you would do is you would work with these selectors, right? So you would have to dig into the HTML and you would find, oh, this one has a class of price. Manually select it, right? So here you would select it right? and then you could do text content and here you get the price now we don't need to do this anymore it's way easier now there are way easier techniques for example on a client side rendered website like this one you can see there is a loading spinner that's great to see as web scrapers because it means the website if you go to the network tab you can see the website is actually firing off a network request a fetch call to get the data to display here so if you find that one in the list you can see the request url that they use i can copy that and I can just directly use that and get all the data here. No need to fiddle around with selectors, right? So this is an important technique to be aware of. So that may work for a client side rendered website. Here I have the exact same website, but this one is server side rendered. Unfortunately, that's not possible on SSR websites. So server side rendered means the data is already, you could say, baked into the HTML when you load it in the browser here. That rendering of the data in the HTML has already occurred on the server, right? Server-side rendered. So there is no separate API endpoint that we can hook into, but there is another technique for these ones, very underrated actually. With these SSR websites, you may want to check in the HTML, in this case for a script like this, and here you still have all of the data actually here embedded in the HTML. I'll show you how to work with this and how to find it. And sometimes we actually want to use a vision-based approach because sometimes websites make it really difficult to work with a text-based approach. So the last option we really have is to take a screenshot and extract the data from there, which is very easy to do these days with a vision model. I'm going to show you how to do that very easily with OpenAI's model. If you want to have a modern web scraping setup, you're going to need a so-called proxy. So today's sponsor is Smart Proxy. They offer you a proxy like that. And the reason we want to use that is because the these websites, they know what you're doing. They are very good at picking up on what uh, scrapers are doing, whether somebody's trying to get their data. They know what you're doing and they can block you. Now, we don't want to get blocked ourselves. So I want to have a middleman, essentially. So I can send a request to Smart Proxy and Smart Proxy in turn will send the request to our target website. And, and then we get a result back again. I'll show you that in the video as well. All right, so we want to do some scraping. So here I have a simple function, just a simple file, and I want to scrape this website so I load the page and I can see that they are using a separate fetch call to get the data this is great news network tab fetch and here is that network call so I can get the URL from which the website is getting it and actually I can just use that so if I do that here is the data that they're using already in a structured format and it may actually have even more data for example a rating here than what they are actually using here right so they may not actually use all of the data here in the actual visual result i can just make a fetch call from my script i get a response and I can just parse that as JSON and I can log it right here. Now, if I run the script, let's see what we get. All right, so here you can see in my terminal now, I'm getting all of the data and I don't even have to do much because it's a client-side rendered website, that's easy. Now, what about these server-side rendered websites? So it's actually the same page, but it has a different rendering model. When we load the page, we get the HTML here with all of the data already baked in there. So there's not gonna be a separate endpoint that we can make a call to. So now we kind of need to get all of the HTML HTML, but in some of these SSR websites, the data is still separately part of the HTML because they're doing something called hydration. So they still need that data. So this actually turns out to be the last script in the HTML. So if I can get all of the HTML and then just select the last one, by the way, Copilot is so good at suggesting the code here for these regex type of situations and actually it comes up with a different one now so let's see if this still works if i log what we're going to get from that let's actually see what we get all right so now you can see i get all of this now it still looks like gibberish so how can we make sense of this well we could use an llm to extract the data and get it in a nice format that we want so here i'm using openai i installed their package and i'm also loading some environment variables with my openai api key and i can do chat completions as of recording i'm using 4.0 there is also 1.0 that's being released at the time of recording but it should be a pretty simple task so we can get away with a cheaper or older model and i'm just telling the llm hey we have a bunch of gibberish essentially just extract the product data and give it to me in json so i'm logging the results here of what we get back so 
let me run that script again and let's see what we get so let's see what we get all right so now you can see i'm still getting all of the data here from an ssr website here nicely in json so now we get a similar result before i show you the vision based approach i want to make this a little bit more professional so i want to add a proxy because the way that we're doing it like this many websites will know exactly what you're doing and they're going to block you so right now when we make this fetch call there's a network request directly from my computer to that target website and these days these websites are so good at detecting what you're doing so instead, I want to make a network call to the proxy. In this case, we're going to use today's sponsor, Smart Proxy, and they in turn will make the network call to the target website and then will give us a response. So I created an account here. You can find a link in the description if you want to sign up as well. So here in the proxies, they offer various proxies, uh, data center proxies, but also residential proxies. And here I can set it up. So I can pick a location. By default, it's just random anywhere in the world. But I can search for countries. And let's say I want to make it from France. All right. And they give you a username as well as a password password and then below here they also give you the url so let me show you how this looks like so now we can add a proxy so i'm going to use this package here to be able to use it here in a node.js environment and i can just instantiate here new https proxy agent and this is going to be the complete string here with the username and password i put it in an environment variable here make sure you don't show it to anyone else your credentials and then the uh, port and host you can find uh, here in the dashboard as well now i have that proxy agent so i I need to add that to that fetch call here so it will actually make the fetch call to the proxy and not directly to the target website now i need to add this to this fetch call here i can do that by having comma and an object here with agent and that's going to be the proxy agent so then this fetch call will not go directly to the target here it first goes through the proxy so let's try that again and see if it still works i'm gonna run the script all right you can see i still get the result so this is still working let's actually double check so we see the first product has ultrasoft 29.99 that is correct right and second one is memory foam 39.99 yeah that's also correct right, so this is already a pretty sophisticated setup uh, we're scraping an ssr website which is going to be the majority of websites i believe because it has a lot of benefits these ssr for the website owner we're using a new trick or technique and we're using a proxy here right so already pretty cutting edge setup that we have here but let's take it one step further because some of these websites make it difficult for you to work with the text so sometimes they don't have that nice separate script with all the data and if you want to go back to the traditional way with selectors what some of the websites will do is they will automatically change things the structure of the html or change the class name so you may not be able to efficiently work with a text-based approach so we have another option which is to use a vision-based approach so we're going to take a screenshot and then send that to OpenAI. so to make a screenshot it's easier to do with something like uh, playwright or puppeteer so in this video i'm going to use a chromium browser with playwright and i can also use a proxy with uh, playwright or puppeteer so i can still set up my proxy like this using the smart proxy uh, credentials here and then here when i launch the chromium instance i specify the proxy like this right so we're programmatically starting up a browser instance here and we want to go to that website again but again this will go through smart proxy to the websites because that's how we set it up here now i like to wait a bit a bit because that website will go there and we don't immediately want to take a screenshot we want to give the website a little bit of time to uh, load everything and uh, so i have a one second timeout here and then we actually want to make the screenshot so here with playwright i can do page that screenshot i can close the browser and i want to save that screenshot as a file here in my file system let's see how far that gets us i'm going to run the script all right so it's logging making screenshot here and then it ends the script which is correct let's see if we have a script and here we can see we have a screenshot now you can see it took a screenshot here unfortunately it's cutting off the other products so i can make it scroll actually before making a screenshot we can play around with the exact so let me try that again all right so here we have another try all right so we could play around with this but let's try sending this image over to OpenAI and ask it to extract the price data and all the other data so here i'm going to make the api call i'm just using the same api actually for OpenAI. it's, it's, it's still the chat completions api so it's very similar actually as the text approach but instead we now have a, a different structure here so the content is going to be very similar so we have type and then the text uh, prompt you could say but we want to attach the image as well we need to send the image we can send the image in two ways we can host the image somewhere and then just specify the url or we can pass it as a string what's called a base 64 string so this variable here what i get from playwright the screenshot here i can call to string on there it will give it to me in that format i don't want to use too many tokens so 
OpenAI allows me to set the detail option here as well. I can set it to low, which will analyze the image in a lower resolution. So it doesn't cost as many tokens. But let's see if that actually still gives us good results. So let's uh, let's just run this and see what we get. All right, it's getting the result from OpenAI now. Just a, a second result. Oh, okay. And here we get a response. Let's actually see if this is correct. So here we get Ultrasoft 2999. That is correct. Second one, memory 3999. Yeah, so actually the fission-based approach actually seems to work really well. And this may be a solution in case there is an issue with the text-based approach. So now we have a really cutting edge setup with smart proxy and a vision-based approach to scraping. Now it gets even better because smart proxy has just released their core scraping API solution. So if you're scraping e-commerce data, for example, they actually have a dedicated solution for this to make the scraping even better and easier. And it's actually very cheap. So, so let me show you how that works. So here we have the e-commerce core scraping API. So they have some out of the box solutions for some common uh, targets, right? So quite large e-commerce websites or search engines, there are out of the box solutions for that. So if you're just scraping that, it's even easier for you, but also for custom URLs. So here I can specify the URL of the website that I wanna scrape, and I can actually just do it here in the dashboard. I don't need to write any code. So if I'm just trying something, I can just easily do it here. I can pick the location and I can add other things here, but let's actually try this. It will actually scrape it for me right here in the dashboard. So you can see here, I get a response, I get all the HTML here again. And if I wanna use this in my code, I can change the script to something that's actually really simple. In this case, it would just be a simple post call with fetch. So here I would specify some data, the actual target URL, the geography as a very simple example. And there are other options I can pick that deal with some common problem. So the target, but also headless, whether you wanna enable the JavaScript rendering, the locale, for example, in a particular language and cookies. This is very useful if you have to do with authentication, right? You wanna do something behind the login screen, device type, maybe mobile, maybe desktop. And Smart Proxy can even automatically parse the result in some cases. Right, so Smart Proxy gives you the authentication credentials for the core API here. I added that to my environment variable. So now I'm gonna run this script again. And here we go. I get all the results here, all the HTML. I can then process this in any way I see fit. Maybe pass it over to OpenAI or get that last script tag in case the website has all the data in that element. So these core API scrapers are really useful if you're targeting a common target, not just big e-commerce websites, but also uh, search engines and social media websites. They have out of the box solutions and they have great pricing for this. So as of recording, they offer it for the following uh, prices. So check that out. You can find a link in the description. And they also have an advanced version for this, which unlocks more options. So here in the dashboard, I can pick language, location, the device type and browser, and whether it should do JavaScript rendering or not. And actually that one gets really advanced. So if you remember this one, client side rendering, this one has that separate API call. And so it's more efficient to just tap into that one. And we can do that actually with the scraping API as well in the advanced version. So here I can make it a universal target. So what I can specify here is a browser action, fetch resource, and then I can just do like a regex here or filter. I just wanna get the network call that has this in the URL. Okay, I can specify my authorization like this and I'm just gonna log the result. Let's see what we get. And here I get a response with just the data from that API endpoint. So really efficient. I wanna thank Smart Proxy for sponsoring this video. I had a great time working with both their residential proxies as well as their new scraping core APIs. A really slick dashboard actually, great documentation as well, and very affordable pricing. So make sure you check out the link in the description for Smart Proxy. I wanna wish you the best with your scraping adventure. Have a nice day, bye.